video, which is one in a sequence of videos uh, to do with working with and learning how to use GIMP. This time around we're going to deal with this fellow right here, the Blend tool. In some paint applications, some image man manipulation applications, this kind of tool is known as a gradient tool, but um, GIMP refers to it as the Blend tool, so I'll refer to it as a Blend tool as, as the Blend tool as well, but just be aware that those two terms are pretty much interchangeable. Because I want to show you all the different things that the Blend tool can do, I've created an image. Before you arrived, I created this image, um, which is made up of quite a number of layers, most of which are small squares and some circles, which we'll blend into. And I've got these arranged like this so that you'll be able to see the difference between the various blends. So let's get going. With the Blend tool selected, the first thing you'll notice is that there is a modes list. Now if you watch my previous video that dealt with um, modes in connection with layers, then this thing here won't be alien to you. It's the same principle. So maybe watch that video or watch it if you didn't and do some experimentation with layer modes and that will stand you in good stead for using modes with the blend tool. And if you did watch that video you'll know that I suggested that the best way to get to know modes is to um, experiment with them. So for that reason we're going to leave this switched on to normal mode which is the default for this tool. And you can of course uh, experiment with the modes offline of this video when you've finished. The purpose of the blend tool of course is to blend one colour into another. and by default GIMP chooses your current foreground colour and background colour as the two colours that are going to be used in the blend. So we'll leave those selected and we'll just do a straightforward blend. You start the blend by clicking anywhere inside your selection and dragging in any direction and then let go. You should be able to see that the blend didn't start until the, uh, until the position wh where I began dragging and it finished at the point where I let go. So all the pixels above the point where I began dragging are all the first colour solid and all the pixels below where I finished dragging are all the second colour solid and in between is the gradient. If you want the gradient to be as smooth as possible then start outside your selection, you can do that and drag past the end of your selection and then let go. You can use opacity with blend, if I set the opacity to approximately 50% do blend exactly the same as the last one. You can see that that's reduced the opacity in all the pixels in the blend by that amount. Sometimes you need to make sure that you blend in exactly a straight line and sometimes it's difficult to get a straight line. While you're um, dragging the line, if you press if you hold down the control key as I've just done, it will automatically, GIMP will automatically make a straight line for you. Once you've created your blend, you're not stuck with it. If you're not happy with it, you can do it again over the same area. And of course, you can change the direction by changing the place where you start your gradient from. When you want to change the colours that you're using in the gradient, you can either change your background and foreground colours, as you would normally do, or you can select this box, which allows you to select from a number of gradients. You can also download um, gradient packs, but there's also a, a number of preset gradients in here, and you can choose from those. You can also use this check mark or this button to reverse the gradient. One way. The other way. All the blends we've done so far have been of the linear shape, 
but you're not limited to that. You can use, for example, a radial shape. Notice as well that the repeat mode for the blend uh, defaults to none, no repeat. So if you do your blend, you just get one blend. However, if you set that to perhaps sawtooth wave, do a small blend here, and that's the result you get. You're not limited to just colours in your blend, you can also use foreground to transparent. Make sure you've got your foreground colour selected that you want. The blend tool shows you a preview of what the blend's going to look like. Do your blend. In this particular case, the circle already had a white background, so the blend blended into the white background. But if I use a circle with a green background, you can see how the blend to transparency works. These two options, dithering and adaptive oversampling, give you a little more fine control over how the how smooth the gradient is. That's a foreground to transparent blend with dithering on. Let's switch dithering off and do the same blend. If we have a close look. There's really not much difference. There is a little bit of difference, but you would have to um, have a very keen eye to see what that difference is. But sometimes you may be working on something where a great deal of detail is very important, so you may well use those features. The same goes for adaptive super sampling. You can as well use one blend on top of another. Here I've used um, a wood gradient, done a full blend throughout the selection, and I'm going to do a smaller one in the middle. Perhaps a little straighter this time. There we go. Well I hope that's given you a good insight into how to use the blend tool and what it can do for you. Bear in mind that's just a fraction of what you can do with it. There are lots more things that you can do and you should um, discover those by doing your own experiments. Uh, you can read some uh, further information which is located on the GIMP Docs website which I'll put a link to in the show notes and that's a link to the page, the detail page that um, has all the finite details about the blend tool. Okay, that's it for me. I hope that helped you. Thanks for watching. Bye.